tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software $100 and starting pricing for high-end software $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural, foundational, black, American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tariq Radio. I am your host. My name is Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all come on in the room. Let's do what we do. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do what we do. Why don't y'all retweet this and let everybody know that we are live right now? That would be great. And also, you need to hit that like and that subscribe button. Subscribe and like, and then hit that bell notification so that you know it's real every time you pop on here. And what we're going to do, family, before we get into some good game, as we always do, we're going to take a quick commercial break. So y'all don't move a muscle. Let everybody know that we're live and we'll be right back right here on Tariq Radio. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq. King Flex Nasheed, available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack, and the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game, jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble right now. Sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game. Jive chumps. Listen, when disaster strikes, will you be ready? With Black Star Survival, you can be ready. Their online store, blackstarsurvival.com, offers a wide range of disaster preparedness and tactical gear to help you face any emergency. From survival kits and first aid kits to emergency food and water, 
body armor, anything you need, ammunition, firearms, they have everything you need to stay safe. And now for a limited time only, use the coupon code FLEX10 when you check out and save 10% on your entire order. So don't wait until it's too late. Visit BlackStarSurvival.com right now and take the first steps towards peace of mind. Dave Ski here, captain of the Skyba at Skyba. Group economics right on your phone. After soaking up game from Flex, please check out the Wealth Management Tutor Bismarck Preach from the CBC. After watching that, you'll get it 100% of what we're doing. Search Skyba service, Google Play, App Store, Skyba. Learn how to trick out the app to get indie music publishing. Discounts for your own ads. Forex indicators. Skyber's for us, by us. You know what I'm saying? So it's time to come up, baby. Skyber. Word up. Word up. Players get your hustle on. Oh, yeah. Skyber.org. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Old goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they think it, you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip, hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon Juice, and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. You are now tuned into the legendary OG. OG. Tariq Nasheed. I was up on this. To all my friends. On Tariq Radio. 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 Where is Tariq getting all this cash? Oh, 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 I am back. This is Tariq, ladies and gentlemen. I am back. I am back. I am back. Glad to have you guys tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. We're here, ready to do our thing. Come on in the room. Glad to have you guys tuning in. And by the way, you can get that Root Work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. Rootworkstyle.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to have y'all in here, man. A lot of stuff we're going to talk about today. A lot of things we're going to touch on. We need more people in the room. People are coming in slowly. I'm here. Let's get up to 2,000 people, then I'll hop on camera. Let's do that. When we get 2,000 people in here, at least 2,000, then I'm going to pop on camera and really chop it up with the family. But I'm going to need you guys to retweet this, retweet it, repost it, rebroadcast it, put, a, put this link on your Facebook page, put it on your Twitter page, put it on your IG story, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can really get busy today. Hold on. One second. I'm just posting something myself. But yeah, let's get 2,000 people in here. We should be able to get 2,000 people in here within the next 30 seconds. It's coming up. It's rising. It's rising. Oh, yeah, the mic sounds crispy. Yeah, you know, we got radio station vibes today. But um, a lot of stuff we're going to touch on today. Um, we're going to talk about... Hispanic Heritage Month. That's going to be what we're talking about, among other things. There's some other things that we got to hit up on. One thing we got to talk about out there in Ohio, there's a case with a guy who got killed named Ethan Lemming. Ethan Lemming, and let me show a picture of Ethan. Let me Let me go to my page here let me go to my page hey when i go on live and people start texting me and all that stuff all right let me let me see if i can see ethan's okay here we go so we go here all right that's ethan lemming right there he was out there in ohio in akron ohio so ethan was going around with a very deadly and dangerous pellet gun shooting at black folks went around shooting at people 
Nobody knows if it was a real gun. We do know that that gun is very dangerous and that many law enforcement agencies said, hey, man, y'all don't be with that gun. We're arresting people and putting charges on them if they're going around here shooting people with that gun. That gun is very dangerous. That gun has seriously injured a lot of people. Uh, a lot of the right wingers are trying to play it off as just some kind of harmless toy. That's not a harmless toy at all. There's a very dangerous weapon that this guy had. And his victims, the people he was shooting at, they don't know what the hell is going on. You have so many people on alert with all of these white supremacist mass shootings. So there were some innocent black brothers just minding their business. I think they were playing basketball. This guy comes along in a car and does a drive-by shooting or whatever, shooting at these guys with this pellet gun. So they step to him, try to take the gun away, and they stomped him out. You know, they put hands and feet on him. The guy, Ethan, fell down, and he, you know, had some blunt force, force trauma, and then he ended up dying. And a lot of the white supremacists were calling foul on this. They were like, oh, my God. That was overkill. They didn't have to go that far with it. Oh, that was just so over the top. Yeah, they were shooting frozen pellets. Now, here's the thing. The brothers, they've been acquitted on the serious charges of like manslaughter, I think. What was the the what was the serious charges? They had some very serious charges. I think the brothers only got hit with like a misdemeanor assault which they shouldn't even have that by the way they shouldn't have assault these guys were perfectly innocent these brothers when they went outside they didn't intend on having to defend themselves they didn't know that somebody was going to come shooting at them um here are the brothers right here um involuntary manslaughter not guilty they got guilty on an assault charge and bore the the white supremacists around the country, especially in Ohio, so involuntary manslaughter, not guilty, um, assault guilty, aggravated assault guilty, which they shouldn't even have those, but one of them is a misdemeanor. So you got people out here crying, oh my God, where's the justice? This is justice. This is 100% justice. What are y'all talking about? There's this whole weird narrative that black people are not supposed to defend ourselves. We're supposed to just sit around here getting abused and shot at by God knows who, and we're supposed to take it. We can't defend ourselves. Black people, you have a God-given right to defend yourselves. That wasn't overkill. That was self-defense. And the same people who sit up here complaining about these black people practicing self-defense, these were the same people who were propping up Kyle Rittenhouse. I don't want to hear nothing about how it was overkill when all of these people sat here and supported Kyle Rittenhouse, who was getting chased with a, with a skateboard. Nobody had a gun. Kyle Rittenhouse was the only one with a gun. They were chasing him away so he wouldn't shoot nobody. And he ended up shooting somebody. And they said, well, hell, he feared for his life. Well, these brothers feared, feared for their lives. See, you guys set a precedent with caping for your boy Kyle Rittenhouse. See, y'all set a precedent. See, here's the thing. When y'all sit here and co-sign these real janky little laws, what you do, you set a precedent so that black people can use those same defenses as well. Y'all set a precedent. You set another precedent by saying, out there in Ohio, by the way, and we got 2,000 people in here. I'm going to get on camera in a minute. Let me get on camera in a minute. I want to keep this picture up. But out there in Ohio... A lot of people are copying, please, talking about, oh, my God, it was a toy gun. It was a toy. <laughs> why would why should somebody have to die over a toy? You mean like Tamir Rice? Tamir Rice died over a toy. Y'all sat there and co-signed that little boy playing by himself in a park, which is what little kids are supposed to do. They ran up on that little kid and murdered him in cold blood. And you got white supremacists out here lying, talking about he pointed that gun at the police when there's video of Tamir Rice not doing anything of the sort. They pulled up on him and shot that kid within two seconds. 
So yes, a toy is grounds for self-defense because you guys sat there and set the precedent for it. So Ethan got some of the same energy. Also in Ohio, if you guys remember, Jonathan Crawford, brother John Crawford, it was a brother in a Walmart who bought, I think he was buying a BB gun. Some white supremacist suspect got on the phone and lied to the police talking about he was waving the gun around and pointing the gun at customers at Walmart. And then the cops came in blasting that brother. And the little race soldier who made the little death call, nothing happened to him. Nothing happened to the race soldier. So I don't want to hear nothing about somebody having a, a toy or a BB gun you guys sat up there and justified Tamir Rice, John Crawford, all of these people getting killed for nothing, for having guns that's not even real guns. And this guy, Ethan, was running around here shooting people, so he got that energy he was supposed to get. You guys set the precedent for that. So you're welcome. Don't complain now. I don't want to hear a damn thing about, oh, God. It's just a toy. No, it ain't. And you guys set the precedent for it not just being a toy. Nobody knows if it's a toy or not. As as you guys say, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Ethan was going around like a damn thug and an idiot shooting at random innocent people. That was dumb. That was dumb. And if he had not have done that, he would still be alive. The black people involved are 100% innocent. They shouldn't be allowed to be used as target practice. You have a God-given right as black people to defend yourselves. So you guys are not going to shame us with your racial double, sh double standard. We're not doing racial double, double standards. Y'all love trying to play that game. We're not doing that. Speaking of dumb... Um, I think this was, was this in Philly? You had these fools out here looting, which is whatever. They're they out here breaking in stores. And you had this chick who's on social media named Meatball. She's like a real masculine chick who's, you know, she'd be on social media just kind of talking trash, trolling or whatever. So she goes out here and starts live streaming these different, um, um, flash mobs running in stores so her live stream gets into the thousands so she's going around different places live streaming these flash mobs her ignorant ass ends up getting arrested they done threw six felonies on her they about to make an example out of her that was dumb now let me let me play the video of that that was dumb y'all better understand y'all going out here trying to do things for the gram and do things for clout and then you put yourself out there nobody's going to come to your rescue hold on one second this is meatball all right hold on let me play let me play meatball out here hold on oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. everybody must eat everybody must eat everybody must eat So in the second picture, in the second photograph, her crying, in the second photograph, she's crying because her little old ignorant ass got arrested and they done put six felonies on her. So, hey, y'all can't be out here filming your crimes. There's a reason why the people out there got masks on and got hoodies on. Everything ain't about a damn clout chase. My goodness, the clout chasing is insane out here. She's dry snitching on her damn self. Y'all get off the, the gram and the Instagram and uh, yeah, everything ain't about clout. Y'all got to have some decorum. Just don't be out here doing no dumb shit, you know. 
And there, there's nothing fly about that. He's running up in liquor stores. There's nothing fly about that. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me, should I get on camera? There's a lot of folks in here. And by the way, everybody gets your root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com. That's where you can get your root work deodorant. People are loving the vanilla scent, the coconut butter scent. Um, by the holiday season, in a couple of months, we're going to have some new scents. We're going to have some blueberry, mango scent, orange scent, lavender. A lot of people have been asking for the lavender and the lavender. I'm wearing the lavender scent now. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm testing it out. What I do, I test the, the, the fragrances out myself for a minute and just to see how it lasts and that that lavender is really hitting. You guys are going to really like the lavender scent. We call it Lucky Lavender. So that's coming. Root work, man, is really the business. Root work is the vibe. People are buying it by the droves. It's so popping that we are probably going to open up a root work store, ladies and gentlemen, pretty soon. We're going to keep people posted on that. But what we're talking about today we're talking about, and you know what? Let me do this. Let me do this because we got a lot of folks in here. Boom. What's up, family? I'm here. How y'all doing? I'm here. Let me get on camera with the family. How's everybody living? We're on camera. Let me get on camera. We got a lot of folks in here, almost 3,000 people in here. Um, the unscented. We don't have the unscented yet, but I think, how many of you guys like wearing unscented? And by the way, shout out, I got my Sanford and Son shirt. Got my Sanford and Son shirt rocking. So lavender, yeah, that lavender feels very good too. That lavender, it, it, it smells good and it feels good too. All right. Lavender keeps mosquitoes away. Yeah, that lavender is not no joke. The lavender scent is not no joke. You guys are going to love it. You guys already love the coconut butter scent and the vanilla scent. It's a vibe and people are buying it by the droves. And I appreciate everybody for doing that. You know? But listen. Um, right now is Hispanic Heritage Month. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, ladies and gentlemen, and shout out to the Hispanic community. If you want to celebrate your heritage, that's a beautiful thing. That's fine. That's great. That's a wonderful thing. When anybody wants to celebrate their lineage, that's fine. Anybody who want to celebrate their lineage, that is fine. The thing is, you know, I hate when we celebrate our lineage, when we start talking about our foundation of black American lineage, it's like, you niggas are divisive. You niggas are divisive. Yeah. You, you dig? We get that talk. And we're not divisive. And I, I want us to really, really start appreciating and gatekeeping our culture more. I want to shout out the... Muskogee, I think it's the Muskogee tribe out there in Oklahoma, if I'm not mistaken. They got a, they won a case out there where they are going to be the black Muskogees, if I'm not mistaken. They're getting recognized federally by the tribe out there because of the 1866 treaty that we've been talking about for a long time. They actually won a case where the black um, freedmen who's connected with these Native American tribes, they are going to be recognized, which is a great thing. Which is a great thing because a lot of black people were connected to some of these tribes. And at one point when money started coming in and land allotments started coming in, they started to, all the dark ones, they started to kick them out and say, okay, well that, you know, he ain't, he don't have the blood quantum. They start playing all these little games and stuff. Am I, somebody said I'm mistaken. What, what, what did I say? Was it the Creeks? I thought it was the Muskogees. Which one was it? Which one was it? I hope I'm telling the truth. It was one of those Native American tribes. It was one of those Native American tribes. Yes, the Muskogee. I was right. Okay, somebody said I was wrong. Okay, I was right. I was right. All right. 
So this sets a precedent because see what happens, these tribes have a bunch of $5 Indians in them who are not Native American at all. You got a bunch of Europeans whose family paid some money to get on the, the dolls rolls under the table. And a lot of the black people who do have that indigenous ancestry, they get pushed by the wayside. So now they're going to have to honor some of those treaties, which is good. Like I, when I was just down in um, New Orleans and I showed video of us on the plantations there, if you look at the plantations, they talk about where the lineages of some of the people who were enslaved, where they came from. They'll put it down. They wrote it down and they got a whole mural saying, well, this slave, um, um, Timbuk, we got him from West Africa, um, Jimbo, he was a black Native American. Caesar was Angolan. Um, Angela was black Native American. So there are a lot, just over and over again, you have these people documenting that there were black people who were clicked in with these Native American tribes. They're saying black and Native American, but I'm thinking these people, because just to have so many people who were mixed with black and Native American or African and Native American, just the odds of that. They're listing these people, black and Native American, because these people are actually Native Americans who just have black phenotypes. You had a lot of that. You had a lot of people who were actually just Native Americans, but their phenotype was black, just like certain people in Africa. They just had black phenotypes. And all the ones with the black phenotypes with their lips were a little big the nose was a little big the hair was a little coarse they just reclassified them as negro later on down the line so we got to understand how the game is played out here we got to understand this game yeah but shout out to that tribe now going back into hispanic heritage month the thing is i noticed when they start talking about hispanic heritage a lot of times People start trying to re -re rewrite history and remix history. People start trying to latch on to what FBAs did and then try to erase us. People like John Leguizamo is very good at that. And they're getting bolder and bolder each year. Whenever they start talking about Hispanic history... They start talking about, yeah, yeah, so Hispanics, we've been in the United States longer than anybody. No. Yeah, we, Hispanics, we built the United States. We fought in every war. No. No, no, no. Well, remember when John Leguizamo was saying all that stuff? So they start trying to do things to rewrite history. And look at some of the articles that's been coming out this week. Let me let me show y'all some of the stuff that's been said about Hispanic Heritage Month, what they're trying to put out here. Now, right here, look at this story here. This was a tweet from, um, hold on, let me, let me put it up here. Um, NBC News, almost eight decades ago, in an area where the courthouse stand, a Mexican-American couple brought a lawsuit that ended school segregation in California and was later used as the blueprint for the Brown versus Board of Education landmark ruling. This is complete horse crap. This isn't true. Family, this isn't true at all. Family, this is not true what these people are saying in this article, the case was a landmark case for Mexicans out here because the Mexican community were basically fighting for their right to be recognized as white. That didn't end school segregation in California. No, it didn't. That didn't end school segregation. That got the Mexican community, their argument was, hey, 
don't put us in segregated Mexican schools because what they did when some Mexican immigrants came over, they put them in little Mexican schools. They were like, oh, no, 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 no. You guys are treating us like niggas. We're, like, we're not like the niggas. We're white like you. I'm a white boy. Just like that first 48. No, no, I don't gangbang. I'm a white boy like you and me. I'm white. I'm, we're white like you. So we, segregation is cool, just not us. That's what they were fighting for, and that's what they got. They, they got recognized as white, so okay, you can go to the white schools. They didn't stop segregation, and it had nothing to do with Brown and Board, the, uh, the Brown and the Board of Education ruling. We were fighting to just make things equal all across the board. We weren't fighting to be up with, with white zaddy. We weren't fighting for that. We were like, no, everything has to be equal. That's what we were fighting for. No, we don't want nobody mistreated. We don't want nobody to be deprived. We want everybody to have equal learning, equal opportunity, equal protection under the law. That's what we were fighting for with Brown and, Board of Ed, and, and the Board of Education. So let, don't let them rewrite history. They were fighting to be recognized as white. Hey, remember, hey, we're kind of brown, but shit, we are white now. That's that's their argument. And remember, the LULAC organization, the biggest Latin American organization in the in the country, they were vehement about fighting for the right to be white because in the 1930s, they changed the census from white to Mexican. And it was those Latino organizations that said, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to be a separate race. We want to be white. We want to be white. And then they got the right to be white. And LULAC, that organization, they actually brag on their website about fighting for the right to be white. Don't let these people fool you. People play this game and act like they don't classify themselves as white and come around us lying. They come around us lying their asses off. They classify themselves as white, 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 white. They classify themselves as white. They go out of their way to classify themselves as white and then get around us like, I'm not white, I'm, not, I'm brown. No, 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 no. Look at your paperwork. That's why you see their paperwork is always white. And then they start making excuses, just like that dude up there in um, um, Nevada who ran over that man. He was a white Latino. With all of his paperwork, he's white. And you got people online trying to argue about that, lying their asses off. He's not white. Yes, he is white. He's classified as white based on the law. Yeah. It's nothing for them to lie. Yeah, George Zimmerman is white. Don't let them run that game and they try to get upset or fake upset when we point it out. But lies like that are very interesting and they love pushing these lies around Hispanic Heritage Month. And another lie they started to push. We're going to go here. They pushed this lie here about the Zoot Suit Riots. Listen to this. All right. Hold on. They're talking about the Zoot Suit Riots. All right. This was ABC News. All right. Listen to this. Listen to this. Hold on. All right. At El Pachuco Zoot Suits in Fullerton, the Estrella family has been keeping the Zoot Suit a la mode for the past 45 years. The 1940s attire popularized by Mexican and Mexican-American youth known for wearing the flat popularized by Mexican and Mexican-American youth attire popularized by Mexican and Mexican-American youth Known for wearing the flamboyant styles that earned them the name Pachucos. This by me wanting one is what started all this, because I tried to buy one. Estrella was fascinated by the suit and wanted one for her little brother. So she found a tailor to make one, which launched her business. And she found others wanted them too. Her son and daughter-in-law now run the business. In the very beginning. Okay, okay, well, that's enough said the zoot suit was popularized by Mexican Americans and Mexican American youth. Family, do you know how much of a disgusting lie that is? 
I'm, I'm here. Y'all hear me? I got it. Family, that that that's a disgusting lie to tell. I'm, I'm, we, the sound is good. That's a disgusting lie to tell. Y'all know good and well that was not popularized by the Hispanic community. Foundational Black Americans popularized the zoot suit a decade before. They got the zoot suits from Foundational Black Americans. And they acknowledge that. They know that. But now, when you're trying to erase history, it's you just go on and lie. You had brothers in Harlem, the Harlem Renaissance brothers, Cab Calloway, wearing zoot suits all the way in the 1930s. Foundational Black Americans uh, popularized the zoot suits. It was created by, you know, um, the brother from Sanford and Son. Y'all, who, who remembers Sanford and Son growing up? I used to watch Sanford and Son with my grandmother. The person who created the zoot suit was Skillet from the Leroy and Skillet comedy troupe. He was um, a regular on Sanford and Son. Leroy and Skillet. Skillet was Leroy and Skillet was a comedy team. Ernest Skillet created the zoot suit. It was a part of his comedy routine. Gave the idea to Cab Calloway, then it took off. But a lot of the jazz guys and the blues guys were rocking the zoot suits. Back all the way in the 1930s, family. And the Hispanic community, again, a decade later, they saw what we were doing and said, hey, those guys look cool. Let us do it. That sounds familiar. Look at with hip hop. People start doing what we do. They, they catch on about a decade later, and then all of a sudden, they created it. This is why we're doing this damn documentary, family. This is why we're, we're working feverishly on this documentary. You got these other groups who come in and do what we do. They come in about a decade later. They come in and do it. And then all of a sudden, we did it 50-50. We, we both created it. Blacks and Latinos created this. No. That's simply not true, ladies and gentlemen. That's colonization. That's like colonizing. That's a colonizer's mindset. Yeah? See, this is why we should have been gatekeeping foundational black American culture a long time ago. See, we got this thing where we do things and we're so creative. We just kind of give it, give it away. Yeah, we can share it. Yeah, blacks and Caribbeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can share. We, we're so creative. We can come up with some new stuff just like that. We got to start gatekeeping our stuff, family. There's nothing wrong with us gatekeeping our stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm working very hard on this documentary. I'm working, yeah, 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 I know Dr. Cologne, I already know about him. And yeah, that's another person with a colonizer's mindset. And I know he's listening. I know he's listening. And, and Cologne, I, you text me. I got your text talking about Lord Jamar. Lord Jamar ain't from the Bronx. Lord Jamar, is from, I got your bullshit text. I didn't even respond back to you, dude, because I don't care. I don't care. You still getting this work. I do not care. What's up to my brother Lee Hubbard? Yeah, just sent me a text about the zoot suits. The reason why we we would have had the um the trailer for the new documentary up already. I'm going through so much with the city of L.A. They're giving me the runaround about giving us some permits. They're giving us the permit runaround, which is what they do when they try to sabotage black businesses. They're they're running us around like crazy. Oh yeah, all my L.A. people. If you know some people who my my FBA folks or whoever in L.A. If you are clicked in with some permit expediters, please holler at me. If you are clicked in in L.A. with some people who can expedite permits, please holler at me if you're out here in L.A. Holler at me if you are from L.A. If you're in L.A., give me a holler, man, so we can do business. Um, email me. Y'all know how to find my email. Y'all y'all email me. You guys know how to find my email. But I digress. But... Family, it's it's getting so bad. We we know the zoot suit thing. That's a lie. But it's getting so bad. They're trying to claim other stuff now. Family, they're trying to claim now that... And, and, and by the way, speaking of the zoot suit riots, by the way, before I go on. The zoot suit riots, we got to understand, that happened in 1943 out here in L.A. 
So basically, a bunch of white servicemen, this was World War II, it was popping off, so you had a bunch of white servicemen came in L.A., thousands of them were walking around, and they saw these um, Mexican cats, and there were a couple of black guys sprinkled in there with them, dressed in these zoot suits. So the whole thing was basically, you guys are running around here dressed like niggas. You think? They knew what it was. They had anger and animosity towards them because see white supremacy they go through like and our brother um professor black truth talks about how other racial groups go through a hazing process when they come among the white supremacists some of these groups who are classified as white they kind of got to get hazed a little bit so they can know the rules like the Italians. The Italians came over and they got hazed a little bit. They lynched a, a few of the Italians just to let them know what the business was. Some of the Middle Eastern people, they'll kind of haze them a little bit just to let them know what it is. So the um, white Hispanics were being hazed by the Anglo white people to let them know, hey, y'all y'all acting like these niggas. And, you know, the niggas, you don't supposed to be acting like them. If you want to come on into this white thing, don't act too much like them. That was the whole narrative. So they were dressed like black folks and they started getting attacked. But I want y'all to understand something interesting about the Zoot Suit riots. What they don't tell you is that a lot of black people in L.A., were helping the Hispanic people, helping to defend them. A lot of black people, not just in Los Angeles, but really around the country, were defending the Mexicans who were getting harmed in the Zoot Suit riots. Because we had the black press at the time making a lot of noise about it. And you guys can go Google. There are articles about this. Hold on. Let me, let me find some of the articles to show you guys. Like right here, the untold story of the Zoot Suit riots, how black L.A. defended um, Mexican-Americans. Yeah, a lot of the black people around the country and in L.A., black people were looking out for them. You had the NAACP speaking up for the Mexican community. Black preachers in L.A., they said, hey, we're going to have to stand with them. He um, it was a uh, Clayton Russell. He was a, a big time preacher at the time. He said, hey, man, we got to stand with these people, man. They're being shamefully attacked. We got to stand with them as a black community. And they and they said we in the black community, the Negro community, we're more unified and we have greater political power. We must lead and demand for full police protection of the Mexican community. It was black people stepping up for the Mexican community, dude. We've always sat here and and defended all of these other groups when they've been harmed at the same time when you had black organizations standing up for the the hispanic community and i'm talking not just black organizations you had black civilians stepping up saying to the mexican community hey man we got you come down here to our community and kind of hide out for a minute until things kind of die down because those white supremacists weren't going down there to south l.a with the bullshit the brothers down on Central Avenue in South L.A., they were ready. The white supremacists didn't go down there with that stupid shit. They stayed East L.A. downtown with it. They didn't go down to the, the black area. The black folks in L.A. was ready for it. But it was black people in L.A. who were going up to the, some of the Mexican people who were kind of running for their lives. And they were like, hey, man, you here's my car. Borrow my car. Go knock out some of them white supremacists and drop my car off back on Slauson Boulevard. Just drop the car off. Go handle your business, though. We were letting these folks have our cars. We were helping them out, giving them weapons. We were helping them out. We were defending them in the black press which was pretty prominent at the time because we had the ear of the international community. Some of our newspapers would go internationally. So we were defending them. At the same time, organizations like LULAC, they were going around talking about, well, the Negro problem, that ain't our problem. Yeah, the, the Negroes, they got to kind of do, let them handle their own business. Their problem ain't our problem. Y'all look that up. Some of those prominent Latino organizations, they were telling us to hold our own nuts. They weren't riding for us for nothing. Don't ever let these people try to rewrite history as if they did something that kind of politically and socially benefited us. They were looking out for themselves and their whiteness. And that's the historic reality. I'm just talking history here. I'm just talking history. Yeah, 
but black folks were defending them big time we've always done that defend these other groups and then they, they turn on us like the filipinos it was black people um defending filipinos during the 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 war over there but the u.s went over there committing genocide black people one black man became a deserter he deserted and became a turncoat brother from florida and became a guerrilla fighter and became a maroon out there and saved a lot of lives. Eh? Real talk. So we got to tell the truth about some of this stuff that's going on out here. We got a lot of people in here, almost 5,000 people in here. Shout out to everybody in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to everybody in the room. Now, the disrespect is getting so bad during Hispanic Heritage Month. Family, they're now starting to take credit for some of our dances, particularly the moonwalk. They're trying to take credit for the damn moonwalk, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on one second. Hold on. Oh, y'all bear with me. Oh, oh, oh bear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know what that sound is. Huh? But yeah, y'all, y'all bear with me. Hold on one second. So they're trying to take credit for the moonwalk now. Man, hold on one second. Let me show y'all some stuff here. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Trying to cue some stuff up for you guys. Hold on. All right. Hold on. Um, y'all bear with me. Let me. I'm cueing some stuff up. Hold on one second. But now check this out. Uh, da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. All right. All right. So now they're talking about this Mexican actor created the damn moonwalk. Check this out. Hold on. Let me turn the sound up. Is it true that a Mexican actor and dancer performed the moonwalk 33 years before Michael Jackson? His name is Adalberto Martinez, known better by his stage name of Resortes. And he was a Mexican actor, dancer, and comedian, known as El Rey del Baile y de la Risa. Throughout his prolific career, he performed in over 50 Mexican films and television shows, and is an icon of the golden age of Mexican cinema. And here he is on film at just 17 years old. No, he's not 17. And I don't know, know if that's him. But this this movie is from like 1959. So it's not from 1950. See, they trying to move the dates around. This movie here is from 1959. Performing an interpretation of the moonwalk dance five years before Bill Bailey and 33 years before Michael Jackson. Okay, see what they're saying? Five years before Bill Bailey. No, no. That was in 1959. That's not Bill Bailey did the moonwalk a couple of times on film. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh I don't want to play that music. Oh. All right, hold on. They're playing Michael Jackson music. I don't want that. It has been said that Bill Bailey, an American dancer and singer, was the first person on film. To and yeah, that, that's not even the moonwalk. And yeah, that's another thing. That's not even the moonwalk. Dance, a moonwalk dance. During his lifetime, Michael Jackson never mentioned resortes as inspiration and noted James Brown and Fred Astaire as his two biggest dancing inspirations. Yeah, because Resulte wasn't nobody's inspiration. That's why Michael never mentioned him. Nobody, Michael, what, nobody was looking at no Spanish movies. Some sources say that the first was Charlie Chaplin, and others say the first was even Judy Garland. Where? Truthfully, we'll never know who was the first, but we'll always know who was the best. Oh, stop, stop. Yeah, we know who the first was. It wasn't no damn Resulte, whatever y'all call him. It wasn't him. Now, hold on. Hold on. Now, let's go to Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey in 1955. This is Bill Bailey doing the moonwalk all right, at the Apollo. All right, this is 1955. All right. And I got the music down. But, yeah, this is 1955. Boom, boom. He's killing that moonwalk right there. That's 1955. But, hell, let's, let's go even deeper, family. Let's go to 1943. This is a movie called Cabin in the Sky from 1943. 
That's Bill Bailey. He does the same move. Hold on one second. This is 1943. So, yeah, we can let's just kill that argument which she made all together. Let's just dead that thing. So, the, boom, 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 boom. So, he did it right there in 1943. So, yeah, let's let's stop playing games and 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 people out here trying to lie about FBA culture. All right. Let's not play that game. All right, let's 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 not do the lies. All right. We've been busting these moves, family. We've been busting these moves, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody said Cab Calloway did the moonwalk in the movie The Buzz in 1930. Um, hell, you you, you want to go deep, deep. There's some footage. Hold on. Hold on, because there's some footage that goes back to the 1800s, actually, where people were doing the cakewalk. Hold on. Let me show y'all something. We, we can go real far back. Um, this is like late 1800s, early 1900s, where they were doing a dance. They were doing the cakewalk. Was it somebody said this is the early 1930s? Uh, hold on, where is that? Where is that? Okay. Uh, where is that? Uh, right. Hold on. Right here. Hold on. The brother on the left, let me go back to the brother on the left. He's doing like a moonwalk style. Hold on. The brother on the left is doing kind of a moonwalk style. Let me go back. Yeah, so we, we've always done versions of it. So, yeah, that's foundational black American culture all day. So, yeah, we, we're not going to play games with folks. We're not going to play games at all. That's why I can't wait for you guys to see this documentary, boy. We're we're breaking stuff down, these lies about Jamaican toasting and all this shit we got from, man, we're showing you records where black folks were rapping on it in the same type of cadence for the longest. All these records coming out in the early 70s, late 60s, um, in the 50s, where we were rapping, man, we should have been gatekeeping our culture a long time ago. We really should have been gatekeeping our culture a long time ago, ladies and gentlemen. But I digress. Right now, you know, they got the um, a lot of the GOP debates going on right now. And, you know, all these people are doubling down on their anti-black racism. One talking point that comes from these right wing white supremacist think tanks, the talking point about the problem in the black community is fatherlessness. The, the name of the game is for them to always talk about how bad black people are doing to make white people feel better. This is just to make the white supremacists feel better. They always have to mention, well, black people are just doing so bad. And the reason why black people are doing bad is because no father's in the home. OK, well, what the hell are you going to do about it? Why are you talking about how bad black people are doing? And you're not talking about fixing it. You're not talking about correcting it. And anytime somebody talk about what are you going to do to correct it, they start trolling and babbling and deflecting because the name of the game is just to denigrate black people, to paint the narrative that we are just this deprived group of people. Let me tell you something. I want black people to stop buying into that. The black community, we are all right. The only problem we have is systematic white supremacy. But we're okay. You know, I was just down there with the FBA family in New Orleans. Look, we go through the same troubles, trials, and tribulations as every other group. But in comparison to other groups, we're doing just damn fine. We need our reparations money. We need for these people to stop sabotaging our businesses. We need people to stop trying to deprive us of resources. But... We're doing good in spite of all of that stuff. Black people, we're fine. The sky is not falling. In fact, there are articles coming out talking about there are more fathers in, in black homes more than, than ever before at any other time. The black fathers are active. Let's stop letting them run these lies. All of these lies about ain't no father in the home and it's the Democrats' fault that took the dance out. That's the, the Republicans and the Democrats sit around here and play hot potato, pointing the finger at each other's racism. 
All they do is point at each other's racism to get off the fact that the, the dominant society, they're suffering right now on their own because of congenital diseases, because of drug use. You understand? Because of violence, mass shooters, there's a lot of sick stuff going on in the white supremacist community. Them birth rates are in, in the damn tank. So they just need another group to prop up and say, hey, look at how bad these guys are doing. We're fine. All right. We're all right. We're all right. Get around some, some good FBA black people, family. Yeah, we go through whatever we go through, but we're we're fine. You know? What I mean? We're fine. The, the opioids and all that is kicking them in the ass. Look, when I was down there in New Orleans, I saw a lot of white crackheads and meth heads running around there too. You understand? Let's not play that game. Let's not play that game. It's not all copacetic in the white supremacist community. You know? Yeah, that fentanyl ain't no damn joke. Don't let them sit here and make it seem like, oh, they got it so popping and we don't. Stop. Yeah, did I hear what Special Ed said about NWA destroying the black? Yeah, I saw that. And um, um, the rapper Special Ed, he follows me on social media, and I'm cool with Special Ed. He's Jamaican. He was talking about how in hip-hop, hip-hop was cool. There was a lot of consciousness until NWA and the corporate structure funded NWA and NWA ruined a lot of stuff. And I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Look, I was around here in LA and I was around those guys during the rise of NWA. I was there. And in fact, I was in some of the videos. I've been down to audio achievement studios before. Um, yeah, I was in the express yourself video when they shouted on Santa Monica, easy invited me and some, some of the homies over there to it. So I was around those guys during the rise of NWA, when they were being formed, when they were getting stuff popping at McCola Records and the whole shebang. So I saw it. To say that they were the cause of a lot of the ills of the community, not true. All they did, NWA basically rapped about what was really going on. All of this stuff was going on. Man, look, out here in LA, before NWA hit, LA was insane. All right, nigga, the stuff that was going on in L.A., it was a war zone. It was insane out here. Before N.W.A. put a record out. And remember, when L.A. was a war zone, cats were rapping about happy shit. All right. Dudes was rapping about doing the cabbage patch and dancing and the L.A. Dream Team is in the house. The, 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 the Dream Team is in the house. People were rapping about happy stuff to get their minds off all of the stuff that was going on in the streets. L.A. was a beast at the time in the 80s. It was not a joke out here. And then Ice-T, when he made six in the morning, people are like, that's it right there. When Ice-T made six in the morning telling you what it was really like, we were like, yep, that right there. Yes, I've been out here since the, the mid-80s. Yes, I've been out in L.A. since the mid-80s. I've been out here since I was a teenager, man. So, yeah, I was around during the rise of all of that. I was up there at K-Day. I've been, I've been around the mix for a minute. Yeah. I've been in the mix for a minute. So Ice-T, when he did six in the morning, that let folks know that, okay, it's okay to talk about what's really going on because it was kind of taboo to talk about what was really going on out here. You had people like Toddy T. There's a brother named Toddy T made a record called The Battle Ramp. And y'all need to come down to the Hidden History Museum. We got a, um, a West Coast hip-hop history section at the Hidden History Museum. We got a section about that. But it was real. So NWA and those guys basically said, hey, we need to do what Ice-T is doing. You know, Ice-T is rapping about real stuff. Let's rap about the same real stuff and let's double down on it. You know? Yep, Mix Master Spade. And these guys were rapping about real stuff. You know? Oh, yeah. Ice-T, he, he admitted that he got the flow from Schooly D. He got that. 
But but going back to the whole GOP people and all of these folks always using these talking points, Larry Elder, and I don't take Larry Elder seriously. Larry Elder and people like him, Larry Elder, Candace Owens, I, I, I don't like debating with those kind of people because number one, all of their arguments are basically in bad faith. They know that their arguments are in bad faith. Um, they're basically paid to regurgitate a lot of talking points that come from these white supremacist think tanks. And the problem with them is that they're designated crash dummies. So if they get on a, a TV show or do an interview and make a fool out of themselves, they don't lose anything because nobody takes them seriously outside of them basically denigrating black society for white people. So it's nothing. If you make a fool out of them, they don't really lose anything. But shout out to my brother, Van Lathan. Um, Larry Elder was on his broadcast and they asked some very simple questions. There was a sister on there. I think she's a lawyer. And they asked a very serious question and Larry got to babbling and getting flustered so this is Larry Elder doing what he does. And they asked him about all that fatherlessness stuff that he's talking about. What's the solution to it? What's he doing about it? Hold on. No, no, you're, you're, my, Larry, my, 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 my question is clear as day. Is that, do you, have you not done anything to combat fatherlessness? You, are, you, you, you just now acknowledged in your opinion that what I just now said wow. isn't even a problem. Larry, please answer what have you done to combat fatherlessness? I'm waiting for Rachel to answer my question. I've calling. already answered that question. So, so you want me to respond to a problem to no, answer? No, Larry, it's about your problem. campaign, Larry. Larry, this is your campaign. Your campaign is about fatherlessness. I'm giving you the floor to talk about how you have combat fatherlessness because you say it is such an issue in this country and you don't want to answer the question. I'm happy to answer the question, provided that you acknowledge that there is a problem. Oh, Larry, get the fuck out of here. Oh, no. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Oh, did y'all did y'all hear that? Can y'all hear that, by the way? Or do I need to play it again? Were y'all able to hear that pretty good, guys? Oh Lord, hold on. Let me see. I'm happy to answer the question. Okay, y'all heard it. Okay, y'all heard it. Okay. So Larry Elder basically started trolling. That's all he did. That was trolling that he did. Again, they can never answer the the whole the name of the game is just to throw these talking points out there. No rhyme or reason, there's no solution for it. Just throw it out there. Black people are bad and it's the Democrats who made them bad, so white people feel good about yourselves. All right? So those arguments are in bad faith and for it's for him to sit here and make a fool out of himself, it doesn't mean anything. He doesn't lose anything. He doesn't lose anything. So he's their designated crash dummy. And the white supremacists push, they push him out there. So he'll take the hits. He's like a pit bull. He's like a little dog for the white supremacists. He'll take the bites and the scrapes and they'll, they'll throw him a couple of dog biscuits. Yeah. I like to talk to the white supremacists who say those things because see they have something to lose especially if they have a reputation they can't go out here and say this stuff so they get him to say it for them and his job is to get beat up in the public so he doesn't lose anything again arguing with the candace owenses and the larry elders it is a waste of time and i'm not saying and that was a good interview that 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 van did i'm not knocking that at all i'm just saying for me for me i don't waste time with them i just kind of get into a roast session with them because their arguments are in bad faith he's the fall guy in the crash dummy that's all it is yeah so you don't take those guys too seriously i always look at the white supremacists who's funding these dudes that's who i look for what think tank are you connected with because it's the white supremacists who's funding these cats yeah Anyway, let me get up out of here, man. Let me go in here and see what's going on with my kitties, my get my my babies, my baby girl, my baby boys. Um. Anyway, man, go get the root work deodorant. Did y'all see the new root work commercial? Let me show the root work commercial again. Um. You guys got to get the root work. Let me show the commercial, ladies and gentlemen. 
for root work. Hold on one second. Let me show this again. Hold on. What, what, what? Not that. Here we go. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing root work, the all natural foundational black American based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24 hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Boom. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. That's where you can go and get your root work. Rootworkstyle.com. Hit that link right there on the bottom. Get your deodorant, man. And the best thing you're going to have under your arms, you're going to love it. It's a good vibe, ladies and gentlemen. It is a vibe. And you, If you notice, you can wear this stuff for damn near 48 hours and it still smells good on you. You can wear it for 48 hours and it still smells good on you. You think I put this stuff on my babies. Anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. It's been real. I thank everybody for tuning in. Um, Puppy Akuta and Lola Vuve to the family. Y'all have a good day.